Mackenzie Johnston with Cattle News Central, bringing you your February 10th cattle industry headlines. Brought to you by AgRisk Advisors. They provide risk management programs to livestock producers all across the West. Whether you're concerned about price or weather risk, AgRisk Advisors, they are here to help. With current day market fluctuations, there is nothing more important than locking in a price floor on your cattle. So if you'd like to learn more about an LRP, go ahead and reach out to an advisor today. Also sponsored by Lemke Cattle. They're going to be hosting their annual bull sale this Friday, February 11th at the ranch near Lawrence, Nebraska. These naturally thick, heavy muscled, complete Angus, Red Angus, and Balancer genetics are developed right, guaranteed, and built for profit with over half qualified as top dollar Angus sires, while also siring highly maternal, easy keeping females that will keep you in the cow business. Go to lemkeycattle.com uh, or DV Auction or check them out on Facebook for weekly updates and videos. And finally, we're sponsored by American Beef Producer Magazine. They offer in-depth articles on a wide variety of topics within the industry. They feature award-winning photography and so much more within their publication. To check out their most recent edition, their February edition, all you gotta do is click on the American Beef Producer Magazine link above in the caption. That will take you over to their Facebook page where you can check that out. American Beef Producer Magazine, guiding beef producers for over 25 years. According to Forbes, Nielsen IQ has reported that inflation is at 7%, the highest that we have seen in 40 years. At the same time, meat prices have increased 13% just in the last month. Earlier this week, I reported on Tyson's first quarter financial gains. So to refresh everyone's memory, Tyson's quarterly earnings per share increased 48% in their first fiscal quarter that ended on January 1st. Such an increase helped billion, billionaire John Tyson, chairman of Tyson Foods, increase his fortune by $300 million. Tyson's increase in quarterly earnings is attributed to sky-high meat prices, but Tyson claims that the company has been forced to increase meat prices because of input costs going up. But let's consider a few numbers here. On Monday, it was announced that, announced that the meat giant's operating margins were 11% in this most recent quarter. In the pre-pandemic days of 2019, that number was 6.53. If you go back 10 years, Tyson's operating margins were 4%. So the meat giant is now spending less money to make more. Sky News has reported that according to Professor Patrick Brown, CEO of Impossible Foods, and Michael Eisen with the University of California, we must get rid of animal agriculture and plant trees on the empty fields to slow climate change. The two men believe that this needs to happen in the next 15 years, and if it does happen, it would be the same as reducing carbon dioxide emissions by two thirds. I don't know what we're gonna eat, but will at least reduce carbon dioxide emissions. According to their study that was recently published in a climate journal, a third of the Earth's land is used to raise and feed livestock, and that livestock is responsible for 16% of annual greenhouse gas emissions. If trees were planted on that land instead, those trees would remove 800 billion metric tons of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. This would halt the increase in atmospheric greenhouse gases for 30 years, according to the scientists. Professor Brown said that he is hoping others will realize this option is our best chance to reverse the trajectory of climate change. Various scientists have labeled Brown's and Eisen's analysis as extreme and implausible because many parts of the world, um, they are not likely to make the, this transition that is required to do away with agriculture because it's straight up crazy. Professor Toby, Toby Matron with Royal, Royal Agricultural College said that the real problem when it comes to climate change lies in aviation, concrete production, road transportation, etc., which contributes 85% of greenhouse gases, not livestock. This update is also sponsored by Circle 5 Cow School. If you would like to learn how to preg check your own cows or start AIing, Circle 5 Cow School is the way to go. Almost every week, they are hosting classes from Texas to Tennessee. If you would like to check out their schedule, all you gotta do is head on over to Circle 5 Cow School. That is the number five in there, or you can go ahead and just give them a follow on Facebook. 
Reuters has reported that numerous proposed carbon pipelines in the Midwest are causing hundreds of Iowa landowners, more than a dozen state counties, and a handful of lawmakers to fight to limit the use of eminent domain, uh, eminent domain law by these projects. They argue that property rights and other concerns outweigh the potential benefits of the pipelines to local industry and the climate. If a landowner chooses to refuse easement, the companies will turn to eminent domain to gain access to that land in order to put these pipelines through. These pipelines would transport carbon captured at biofuel processing plants for injection underground. Eminent domain in the U.S. allows private companies to take over property in their project, excuse me, if their project is deemed in the public interest and landowners are compensated for that land. The law has been used to ensure energy companies uh, can complete projects like pipelines and transmission lines that move oil, gas, and power to consumers. But eminent domain has yet to be applied to carbon pipelines because they are mostly regulated and cited by states instead of the government, uh, instead of the federal government. As it stands today, there are about 5,000 miles of carbon pipelines in the U.S., mostly in Texas and Wyoming, uh, where the gas is pumped under oil and gas fields to increase pressure and boost production. 5,000 miles, it sounds like, uh, that sounds like quite a bit, but with this new proposal uh, for our country to reach net zero emissions by 2050, which the Biden administration has pushed, another 65,000 miles of pipeline would need to be dropped in the ground. Three companies, Summit Carbon, um, Summit Carbon Solutions, Navigator Ventures, and Wolf Carbon Solutions have come together and proposed 3,650 miles of new pipeline across the Midwest that would carry 39 million tons of captured carbon annually from ethanol and fertilizer plants to storage sites in North Dakota and Illinois. Iowa would get the bulk of the pipelines with more than 1,600 miles of pipeline or 48%. 20 counties in Iowa have filed objections to the use of eminent domain for the pipelines. The big question is whether these pipelines serve a public purpose. Of course, the companies that are putting these pipelines in say that uh, they are a must for our nation to, uh, to, to basically uh, hit our goal of our climate goals. We need those to hit all of our climate goals that again, the Biden administration has laid out. But landowners believe the main beneficiaries of pipelines of the pipelines network would be the pipeline companies themselves, just a small group of people looking to get rich. They are concerned that the pipelines construction could reduce agricultural yields on affected land, and they are also worried about potential leaks of the heavier than air gas affecting people and livestock. That is all I have for you guys this morning. Hope you're having a great week. Have yourself a terrific Thursday. I'll catch you later.